Hello Rising Wellness Community, welcome back to another video. If you are a returning subscriber, hello. If you are new here, welcome to this channel. My name is Shelby and here we cover topics that have to deal with meditation, mindfulness, and well-being. I am so stoked to be giving you guys this video today about the four books that I can full heart honestly attribute to my changing worldview, transformation of the heart, mind, body, and soul. These books are the books that helped me grow and establish myself in seeing the world in a brand new light. The purpose of me doing this video is to share with you guys the insights I had from these books, my experience with the book, and maybe inspire you to pick up one of these books yourself. I will have them all linked down in the description box below, and I hope that at least one of them calls out to you. So let's get started. We have four books here. Most of them are blue, surprisingly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first books. The, not the first books I ever read, obviously. I loved reading books as a kid, but the first book that really began to open me up. And then we'll move through to the most recent book. So, here we go. If you guys haven't heard of this book, I recommend this book highly to every single person I talk to. Anytime I'm talking about books, or talking about meditation, or talking about depression, or feeling stuck, this book is monumental and it was the thing that catapulted me in this direction of learning to love myself, practicing mindfulness, meditation, coming to yoga classes without that sense of so much the physical and really coming to it at a place of opening myself up, expanding, seeing new things. And I was a cultural anthropology major in college, graduated with that as my degree, I guess you could call it, I haven't really used it, but um, that coursework is really there to help expand you to see that the world works in so many ways. People's perspective is truly what changes, manipulates, and functions a society. You know, we here in the Western world, we survive off of money, you know, that monetary kind of way of sustaining ourselves. Whereas in other countries and societies in the past, you know, yams were that, that kind of thing of exchange. And I just think it's so crazy to see how different the world is based on your perspective. What is that quote? Um, when you change the way you see things, the way you see change, the way you see things change. I'll put it up on the screen. I don't know if that's exactly correct, but it's along those lines. And this book is, it really helps to dive deeper into understanding that and to understanding how you can change your perspective, open yourself up. When I was reading this book, I was really deep in a depression and thankfully I was working at a bookstore so I had access to a lot of people who knew a lot about books and read a lot of books and this book is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer it's actually really cool he has his temple of the universe which he talks about in the second book that I'm going to show you um, which is in Florida in Gainesville and I actually went there right after my Vipassana retreat and it's gorgeous the grounds are gorgeous but this book I see a lot of parallels with the intensive I just took for mindfulness and what it's really all about you can see I have like dog-eared and things written down and this book is just one that you want to read a little bit of put it down kind of let it sink in meld it around in your mind maybe for a week see how it changes the way you see your world and your reality it is it eye-opener and it is it's thin like it's a thin book but it has so much knowledge in there so many tools that can help you and he does a really good job of there's this one example where it, the books are really a lot about how we get stuck 
and how we create our reality and how it can keep us in a standstill or it can move us forward and how powerful that reality is and how meditation can help you with that expansion. And there's this one example in the book that always comes back to me and it's about how you're driving down the road in your car, right? You're just driving down the road, it's a good day, you know, you don't have a lot of hang-ups and a lot of things that you're thinking about and the, ro the windows are rolled down and the sun is shining and then you see a car that's the exact same car as your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend and then all of a sudden your thought begins to go on a tangent and then the emotions of maybe that breakup come up and the emotions of maybe the hurt that happened come up or maybe something else comes up that has to do with that boyfriend or the community of friends that was around that person or that girlfriend whatever it is and you can kind of see how your mind just spirals and it completely changes how you see the world in that moment and maybe for the next couple of minutes, next couple of days, week, whatever it is, however long that emotion, that tangle of thoughts and images and sensations gets stuck in you and you can't let it go to let it just be free and see it through non-judgmental awareness and I think that is a really big part of what I learned in my intensive that I was just taking with the Florida Community of Mindfulness um, it's a lot about understanding the process of letting go. And I think that that is very easily overlooked in the Instagram, self-help, woo-woo community. It's, it's not talked about how to go about that process of letting go and that's where I was really stuck. And I couldn't understand that tangle of emotions that kept getting caught in all these different areas and just like suffocating me. And this book, The Untethered Soul, is truly a place to start understanding that. So this book is great. I recommend starting here. Like I said, it is one of those books that you want to read a little bit of. Like it's pretty heady. Um, just read a little bit of it, put it down, let it kind of sit with you and see how it plays out in your world. And something that I really enjoyed about that book, that's kind of Michael Singer's theology, I want to say, like how he goes about in the world with meditation and mindfulness. And then this book here, The Surrender Experiment, this is the second book, is kind of like an autobiography of understanding how he got to this knowledge in the untethered soul. And I found this very helpful because it's a real life example of the power of letting go and of the power of meditation and how it is okay to find faith and trust in those things because in our world we look so much to hold on to solid tangible things you know financial stability I'm, I'm right there with you but this I go back to his story as an example to help me step into faith as an example of showing me how forgiveness and letting go in this process of transformation is so powerful and so necessary to the progression of not only your individual life but of our entire society. So this is a little bit thicker than The Untethered Soul but it's still a pretty small book and I highly recommend reading this one just so you can get this heady information rounded in our current physical worldly reality. So these two books both by Mikey Singer and if you have a chance go to the Temple of the Universe in Gainesville. It's gorgeous. And this book right here tells you like how he procured the land, all the things that happened that just kind of lined up, like universe lined it up as he kept letting it go. Like this guy is super successful and he actually wrote code for medical programs in the 70s or 80s? 80s? 80s or 90s? I can't remember. These books I read like four or five years ago now. Um, but it just shows the power that we have like in letting go. There's so much more waiting for us than what we think we need to control and figure out and plan. Like The universe has infinite possibilities and the power of letting go really helps us to get out of ourselves and step into where the world really needs us and in a way that also fulfills us, um, allows us to be here in this world in a safe environment, in a 
financially stable environment and I think that's very powerful to me because I'm constantly always trying to control and manipulate situations, not in like a, a bad sense or an unskillful sense, but manipulate situations because I feel like if I don't, I'm going to lose control, I'm going to not be financially stable, I'm going to lose my house, lose my car, those kinds of things. And this, these two books really help you to let that go and see the infinite possibilities that are ahead of you and can be there. So. With that being said, with talking about the universe and how things line up and, and the ways in which letting go really help us to understand and perceive the infinite possibilities and the infinite ways that the universe tries to connect with us, a recent book that I read is this one um, by Laurelyn Jackson. It's called Signs and another blue book. This book it's called The Secret Language of the Universe. She has two books, but I've only read this one. And this book, I think, helps to more solidly ground you in the ways in which the universe tries to connect with us and is there for us and is guiding us. I've, I'll share an experience that I had with this book. So I was babysitting these two girls, love them love them so much and we read a couple stories out of this book and they were intrigued like how does the universe work in this way how can these signs come from what seems like ether nothingness air and nothingness and so I lost my dad a few years ago to suicide which was I think I have a video on this channel about that um, when I was first trying to move through all those emotions but I was bringing the girls back from some place, I can't remember, and I was like, okay, universe, and I'd read a few chapters out of this book. And I said, okay, universe, show me a sign that I know means that I've connected with my dad, or my dad is trying to connect with me from the other side, as Laura Lynn puts it. Um, and she visualized it. it's just this thin veil that we we kind of block ourselves off from perceiving, but it's always, the other side is always right here in this moment exactly with us as well as us perceiving ourselves as being right here in this exact moment. So I asked the universe, show me a sign. And I looked on my speedometer and it said 27. That was like, the, I had let it go, I had set it, and then I looked down and the first number I saw was 27 and we were at a stoplight and a fire truck goes by and the number of the fire truck was 27. So then I continued driving and I got home and then my radio or my dash, something said 777 and I was like, okay, is it 27? Is it 777? I'm confused. I don't know which one. Is it 27, 777 or just 7? And so the girls and I were at home. I had made them dinner and I just asked in my head while we were like coloring or something. I was like, okay, universe, is it 27, 777 or 7? I need a clear, definite answer so that I know when I see that number, there's no question in my head like, oh, it's 27, it's supposed to be 7 or it's 7, it's supposed to be 27, you know? I wanted a clear, definite answer and I'd always been working with the universe trying to um, see signs or ask for signs and it never it, it never felt fully accessible like there was something there that was blocking it and this book signs I think helped me tune into that frequency in a way um, I hope that makes sense if it doesn't comment down below and I'll try to explain it to you individually um, so I asked for that while we're drawing and one of the girls was like Shelby we all have sevens you're 27, I'm 7, my grandma's 77, and I was like, okay, it's 7. That number is 7. And I told Amelia that, and she was like, oh, oh my gosh, and she just thought it was so cool to be a part of that and, and be the person that gave me that information. I think that helped her to understand kind of what Laurel and Jackson is talking about in this in this book and I thought that was really powerful like in that moment I was like 
I feel like I fulfilled whatever my destiny was with these two girls. Like, I'm supposed to share this information. So that was really, really cool. Um, and I think it just, this book, Laura Lynn is very powerful medium. And I learned about her on Goop, which is on Netflix, the Goop series. She's the last episode, so if you want to go check her out, she's there. And I always kind of was, like, not sure about mediums too much. But reading this book, the emotions it makes you feel, the, like I said, being able to tune into that frequency, like there was always something that was blocking me from not fully believing or fully allowing, and this book helped me to have real life situations. So she talks, most of this book is like real life situations of people that she's worked with or things that happened to people that she's worked with before she worked with them. Um, and then the last, like, third is kind of how to tune into that kind of stuff for yourself. Um, but just having those real-life examples, just like the Surrender Experiment, his real-life example right here, and then these real-life examples, it just, it helps so much bring all this heady, woo-woo, new-age, hippie ideology down into grounded reality, and I don't think we have enough examples of that. We have so much talk, but we don't have so much lived experience that can be shared with people. So these books all really help with that. And my last book is new. I just purchased this one and I've been loving it for reading either before or after my meditation in the morning. And it's by Jack Cornfield here. It's called A Path with Heart. And it sections this book off. I'm only like a quarter, an eighth of the way through. So I've read this much and there's this much left. This is the, probably the largest book of them all. It's a little bit smaller text than the signs. Um, but what I really love is so far, and it looks like throughout the book too, at the end it always leaves you with a sort of meditation practice to practice what was ever being taught in the chapter ahead. So here's the most recent chapter I'm on. Um, and this was really in line with the intensive that I did, which was the last week of the course was all about the awareness of awareness and the necessary healing chapter in this book um, tunes into that and gives you a meditation for just without judgment viewing the mind, the body, and the soul, and just letting whatever is be. And that's kind of what the untethered soul is about. It's about that non-judgmental awareness of whatever arises, non-identification um, with it. It's You're the the one watching, which Mikey Singer talks about in The Untethered Soul many times. And that was hard for me to tap into and understand before I started reading this book and doing my mindfulness intensive. So this book, like I said, is new and I bought it because it's a guide through the perils and promises of a spiritual life. So it really, I didn't realize this before I made this video, but all of these books are helping to bring that heady information down to a grounded space for you to actually work with in this regular earthly plane. So I, I don't have much more to say about this, A Path with Heart, other than it helps you... sink into that heart space. It helps you to... view self-care and self-help as something that is helping the worldwide community. Um, and it's really helped me move through those emotional tangles, those blockages that I had, and questions that I had about meditation and how to use it in a daily lay person's life. So the Buddha says like, there's monks and then there's lay people, which are like the regular population of people who have jobs and work and have kids and, and don't have all this time to just sit and be with their thoughts and meditate and go hide out in caves in the mountains and just sit and try to attain this state of enlightenment. Jack Kornfield does a really good job of um, sharing that information 
in a way that the lay person can actually execute it. So I highly recommend this book. Um, I feel like there's something else I wanted to say about it. The first chapter in this book is all about loving kindness. So last week I shared the loving kindness meditation and that is a practice that is used worldwide throughout meditation. So I hope you guys tuned into that because it's really a foundational practice. That's why I put it in our meditation foundations playlist. Yeah, so this one is really going to help skillfully guide you through obstacles, questions, um, blocks in your life that you have um, that you can work through with meditation. And I recommend this book to anyone who's starting meditation. This is a great book to just really understand and find humor in where you are, the situation you're in, the trials and tribulations of human experience that we sometimes get caught in. This book is going to help you work through those, blast through those, and continue your practice and inspire you to continue your practice. So these are my books for transformation, for change, for perspective shifts. Here we go. I don't think I can hold them all. <laughs> So like I said, they will be linked down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. These books have truly been what I can attribute my success and continued growth in meditation and mindfulness and getting out of places of depression and anxiety and fear. That's not to say I don't still deal with those things. I do, but I just have this information now that can bring me down into reality, that I can tangibly use on a daily basis, whether it's in regular life going about my day or in my meditation practice. This video was a lot longer than I expected. I, whoever is still here, thank you so much for continuing to watch. And as always, don't forget we have our Facebook community, which is the Raising Wellness community. Just type that into your search bar on Facebook and it'll come up. That is a space where we have just daily interaction with each other. This community can have daily interaction with each other, um, inspire each other to continue our practice, whether it's with mindfulness in the life, meditation, or just overall general well-being. So I hope to see you guys over there. When you join, there's just a couple questions to ask, and then I will prove your membership. So it's just completely free group for you to continue to find support and success in your path. So I hope you guys have a great day afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.